the volume too loud, it, it goes pop. Okay, just another one of the uh, of the things that vex me constantly on a, a regular basis. Uh, hi, how are you? I'm Al, your podcast pal, uh, and um, uh, I am. Uh, I'm. I'm. Here, you know, I wasn't on last night. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to be, be doing Tuesdays as much anymore. Um, I'll do it next week because we're taking off Thursday and Friday. But um, I, I don't know that, I, that I've got four nights a week in me. I really don't. Um, got to be honest with you. I, I have been going through a lot of emotional problems lately. Why? I have no idea. Uh, I could go into them, but I get obsessed by stuff, and then I go crazy with that obsession. And I probably should see a shrink, but by the time he cures me, I'm going to be dead. So why go to the shrink? Um, so anyway, uh, I didn't do the show last night because I didn't feel like doing the show last night. Everybody was going, oh, what's wrong? You got technical problems again? You got blah, 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 blah. You, 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 you're sick, uh, you're dying, uh, what's wrong with you? And no, there was nothing. I just didn't want to do anything. Just me alone. I didn't want to do nothing, okay? Uh, I didn't want to do a show. Uh, I had gone through a bad day on, uh, on Monday. Because what happens is um, I start obsessing about stuff. I could tell you a few of the things I obsess about. I'll tell you one that happened the other day that I'm kind of ashamed of. Um, uh, uh, it, it's just that I, I, if it isn't my health, I obsess about something else. Uh, uh, so for the last couple of days, one of the two, one thing I wasn't, I was obsessing about my refrigerator. See, we've got this refrigerator that's sitting in this apartment. It's been here since, uh, uh from, for, for our accounting, uh, since, uh, maybe 2003, Okay, so that's uh, it's a TV, uh, it's a refrigerator that's 14, no, no, excuse me, like, what? It's, uh, it's 16 years old, okay? Uh, and uh, the, uh, the ice maker, I've always had problems with the ice maker not making enough ice, but uh, all of a sudden it decided not to make ice at all, okay? So I got obsessed with this. Now, I should just say, you know something? It's very simple. You simply fill a tray full of water and you put it in there and there's no technology that's going to prevent it from making ice. If something does prevent it from making ice, then you've got a really serious problem with the planet, okay? Because you freeze ice, uh, water, and it becomes ice, okay? But no, I've got to get this thing working. So uh, there's a, there's a uh, 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 what do you call it, an ice maker. Oh, what do you call it, an ice maker that's in there. If you look in a lot of refrigerators that have ice makers, they have this thing in the side, and it makes ice, okay? Uh, and I can't tell you exactly how it makes ice. I've come to know it kind of intimately. But I figured that that was going. So I ordered a new one from Amazon. Now you're saying, Alex, then you gotta hire the guy to fix it. Nah, nah, Alex is gonna do it himself. So I order the ice maker. Uh, what did I order something else with? I had to order a, uh, a, a hexagonal uh, a nut screwdriver uh, because I didn't have one, quarter inch. And t I t I'm telling you, if you ever have to replace a ice maker in your uh, machine, if it's a simple ice maker, if it's not something fancy that they made special for that, right? Um, it's, two, it's two screws, it's actually two screws that take it off, and then you have to unplug the electric cord, uh, and then uh, you pull that out, and then you, there's a thing under it uh, that you they use the same screwdriver to undo and it, it, you put it on the new one because it kind of balances it so it's, you know, it's flat. And you screw that on. So now we've, we've unscrewed two screws uh, and lifted the thing out because you leave the screws in there because it goes back in and then it sets down on the screws. 
And then um, uh, you uh, tighten this other one so it's just right, and you tighten them all back up. And it's the simplest, uh, oh, don't forget to plug in the electricity. It's the simplest thing to do, really. Uh, the hardest part is that because the screws are in a place where you can't see them, you got to find them kind of by braille. But other than that, I mean, I got the thing put in and everything, so I got it in there. And it's uh, working okay. It's actually making ice, kind of. You know, I'm proud of myself. The Jew fixes something. Uh, and um, uh, so it makes ice. And then all of a sudden, it uh, stops making ice. Why? Because I notice that the chute that comes down, the ice is getting frozen in the chute. Now, I don't know why it's getting frozen. So I go online, I read about it, and it says, well, that happens when you actually have the uh, freezer down rather than up. If, you, if the freezer's really freezing, it should just let the water flow down. I don't know why. Don't tell me. So I do that. So now it makes some ice, and then it stops. So now I'm figuring that it's a... Um, it's the water coming down. I can't, I can't figure it out. Well, to tell you the truth, I have not solved the problem. Sometimes there's water in there and it freezes, and sometimes there isn't. And sometimes I actually take a turkey baster, day baster and put water in there. I, but I got so obsessed with this thing that, you know, that it was, uh, 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 you know, every time I go into, the, uh, into the, um, the kitchen, what do I do? Do I get a snack? No, no. I, I go check the machine out. And quite frankly, we need a new refrigerator. Well, Alex, why don't you get a new refrigerator? Well, I could say the price is too much and all of that, but that's not the reason we're not getting a, a freezer, a refrigerator. And we need one because the doors are all fucked and won't close completely. And uh, it's just the, the refrigerator is on its last leg. But the reason we don't get a free a refrigerator is because we've got this court case going on. And it's finally going to be a trial in September, and if that comes to any kind of resolution in any way, first thing we're doing is buying a refrigerator. But we're not going to buy it now and then have, although we think we're going to prevail in this court thing, God, it is fucking hot in here, and I've got the air conditioner turned up to stun over there. And it's still, uh, it's, it's still, boy, it is just, I'm, I'm sick of this hot weather. Anyway, uh, where was I? What is the temperature right now? Let me, let me take a look here. What is the temperature? Uh, it, it's 79. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's 10 o'clock at night and it's 70 fucking nine. I'm so sick of this hot weather, you know, uh, uh, I may take this off too. I'm. This is not. Uh, this is not good. Uh, anyway. So anyway, so so we, we can't buy a new refrigerator until we know how this court case is going to turn out. Because who wants to buy a new refrigerator and get kicked out of your apartment? And you know, you just put the refrigerator in, and you're not going to take the refrigerator to you to the next apartment because the next apartment will have a refrigerator, probably with an ice maker that works from the very beginning. Anyway. Um, so we're waiting for the whole court thing to be taken care of. That's next month. We're having the trial. The trial. Yeah. That won't solve anything because once we have the trial, if the uh, landlords don't prevail, and they probably won't, uh, they'll put it in, they'll take it to appeal, and that's another two years. But we'll get the refrigerator, okay? But we're waiting for that. So meanwhile, I'm obsessing by trying to get this damn ice maker to work, and it, it's not. So that, that's a minor obsession. Then there was another obsession that I had. Uh, this one a little worse. Uh, I was overseeing my friend Shaggy, and uh, I, uh, I, I have these earphones I got from Soundbeats. Let me let me talk to you about Soundbeats. Okay, there's this company called Soundbeats. I gotta take this off. It is just too hot in here. Um, um, uh, in fact, let me take this off too. It's way too hot in here. Um, let me see here. Okay, um, there's this company called Soundbeats, and they make these uh, earphones, these earbuds. Okay, these wireless earbuds, that, and I love them. 
They cost me like $43, but that was the high-end ones. You can get them for as low as 28 and they're just as fine. I just like them because uh, I have longer playing time on them, and there's a, there's a thing you put them in, uh, and you don't have to, you know, it charges up, and then you can recharge these earphones three hours worth for about 20 times before you have to recharge the, the case. Okay, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Um, but um, I, one day I'm playing, with, taking them out, and it falls on the ground, and the earphone splits open. Now, they, they probably shouldn't do that, but they, it did. So what I did is I tried to click it back together. I figured it would click, and it didn't click, so I got some super glue and super glued it together, which is okay. It's fine. It's, you know. Um, so I call the company and I tell them what happened and they said oh well we'll send you an email and within the week about this okay they took all my information a week later that day I get an email from them saying uh, you know just tell us where you want it sent and we will replace them and don't mind don't bother sending back the pair you have uh, that's too much trouble just keep them gratis we're sending you a new pair and I went that's really nice. You know, that's the way you run a company. Keep an old Jew happy, right? That's the way you keep an old Jew happy. And um, the next day, I go down to my mailbox, and there's some mail for me, and it's from Sound Pete's. Took them less than a day to get it to me here in New York City. So now I'm out of Checky's place, and I put the earphones in my pocket, okay, the two earbuds in my pocket. And, I, and, and later on in the day, I want to tell Shecky the story about Sound Pete's and how wonderful this company was. And I went to reach in my pocket to get them, and there's only one. Somewhere in our whatever we were doing, we went to a diner, and I'm uh, looking in the car, I lost that earphone, and I started obsessing about it horribly. Apologies to Shecky. I make him go back to the diner to see if maybe I dropped it on the floor because at one point I went to, um, I, I did something that may have, oh, yeah, I went to grab something out of my pocket or my phone because I wanted to show him a picture, so I figured maybe it fell uh, in the in the floor near the booth and whatever, but no, and uh, they didn't find one. So and that put Shecky kind of out, and I, I don't blame him. But he didn't want to go back to the diner, and so no, I'm I'm very obsessed by it, and uh, uh, I'm sure I got Shecky a bit upset by it too. Uh, and um, I I come home and I'm just so obsessed by it. So now I but I do have the other pair. And the one that I lost was not the one that I had to, that split open before. It's the one on the uh, the one that split open before. I still have that new earphone, okay? So I then have to pair it with the other earphones, uh, with the other earphone, and it's taking me forever to. I finally managed to do it. But in the meantime, I'm running around the house screaming and yelling and going crazy and going nuts. And for maybe two days, I became a complete recluse. This thing completely, like, threw me for a loop. And the problem is, is that I over-obsess about things like that when I should really go, well, fuck it, you know? I'll buy another pair of earphones or whatever. And I can. I can send away to right now to Amazon and get another pair. Of course, I wasn't going to call them back and say I lost it. <laughs> you know, I lost the one you gave me, the new one you gave me. So now, but I have it working now. But in the meantime, I made Marjorie's life miserable, and I made, uh, I you know, probably wrote Shecky a couple of times about it, and I just was obsessed about it. And it, it's a problem I've been having lately, whether it's with my health or, or with, uh, like, a couple of weeks ago, I thought we were going to have to do a root canal on the tooth back here. It turns out we didn't have to do the root canal. 
but I obsessed about it for a week. Am I going to have to do the root canal? Is it going to cost me the money to do the root canal? Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. And I, I've got to stop this. I really have to stop it. I don't know what's causing it. Now, maybe I, you know, a part of it is I wish I had a job that I could go to. Because I think that would keep me from being as obsessive about stuff. But um, I am, uh, I'm a mentally ill person. I got to tell you, don't, don't sell me a gun. Because I'll probably figure out a way to use it. So... Anyway, I, I was just, uh, 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 you know, bothered by it. So, uh, so I, I obsessed about that. Uh, and I keep, you know, I'm still obsessing about the refrigerator and the freezer, and I've pretty much hacked it to bits because there's a shoot with water. The water comes down, and I keep sticking stuff in there to kind of loosen the ice. It's, you know, so what am I going to do? I just, yeah, I'm... I'm driving myself absolutely, positively crazy. All right, so that's that. Uh, so I'm. I, so last night I was supposed to do a show, and I just went, I can't, you know. And it's getting to the point where doing four nights a week is getting to be too much for me. So I may cut down to three. I may cut down to two. I don't know. Or I, I'll do four and do one hour. You know, something like that. But um, until my, I'm in a better place mentally, uh, I don't know that I can I can do this uh, for um, uh, the amount of time that's needed to, to do this. No, no one else on the internet does you know four podcasts a week for two hours. What am, I, what, what am I thinking? What am I doing? You know, I'm, I'm driving myself nutty, batty, crazy, you know. So anyway. Uh, but I'll tell you, on, on Monday, somebody wrote me on my Facebook page. And um, now where are my glasses? Oh, boy. Oh, I know where they are probably. <laughs> Let me see here. Probably in the shirt I just took off, I would imagine. Let me see. Come here, shirt. It's the same shirt I keep wearing all the time on the show. Um, tip, tip, tip. No, not there. Not there. Not there. Hmm. Well, maybe they're in the uh, kitchen. Now I'll obsess about this till the show's over with. But I do have other glasses. But first, let me just make sure. Here. We go. Here's a pocket. No, not in the pocket. Okay. Well, then I don't. Uh, I don't have the. Uh, uh. So I will take these glasses and use them, or better yet, hold on a second. Let me go over and get some other glasses here. I like. Uh, let's see here. This pair. Nice horn rim glasses. Let's see here. Do I want that? No. Where I, I I know I have another pair here somewhere. Um, uh, here we go. Is these is these like the ones? Oh, these are like the ones that I had. Okay. All right, we got them. We got them. Pops found his glasses. Isn't that wonderful? Anyway, so I'm as I say I'm going crazy. But anyway, I got this letter uh, from somebody, uh, and I wanted to read it to you. It was on my Facebook page, and it made me feel just great. Okay, uh, I was feeling really, really terrible, and this guy wrote me, and his name is James Gleason. I, and I know James. I've known James for years. I've known James till, since he was a little kid, and he used to come to my show in San Francisco because I had a live studio audience, and, and he, his mother used to bring him, or he came down by himself, I can't remember, down to the show. And the kid had a problem. He had alopecia. And he was losing his hair. And this is, this is a kid, I guess, maybe 12 years old. Maybe younger. Um, but um, he writes on my Facebook page the following. Mr. Bennett, I hate being called Mr. Bennett. Call me Alex. Uh, was having coffee in San Francisco just now 
and it hit me to tell you thank you for a happier life. I'm not dying, but I was a young kid with my hair falling out in clumps, and you gave me confidence enough to cut it all off without missing a beat, uh, cut it all off without missing a beat. That changed my life. It was really something you said at the Stuffed Bagel. And that was a restaurant we used to go to after the show. And I watched you give countless comics a leg up, uh, the way Carson helped Rickles and others, and you made a lot of lives better and probably more worth living, and I want to get that in. Appreciate you, and thanks. And that made me feel, that, that, that made me feel good. And um, I, uh, I, I, you know, he's now an older kid, he's got a wife, he's got kids of his own, uh, I don't think hair never seemed to have grown back, but he got alopecia at a very young age. And imagine if you're a kid and you get that. And I just told him, I said, just shave it all off. You know, it's preemptive baldness. You'll, you know, come on. Charlie Brown's bald. Sluggo of Nancy and Sluggo is bald. Um, so there's a lot of bald kids in, uh, in literature. Um, and I felt really good about that. Really, really, really good about getting that message. And I needed it that day because I was feeling like shit. Maybe it came yesterday. I was just feeling like shit. I, in fact, I was sleeping in the guest room. And I, if I, it's just that life has suddenly, I start obsessing about these things. And then everybody around me doesn't even want to talk to me, you know. Plus, you know, I kind of been obsessing lately about the fact that well, let's say I wanted to leave here and go back to San Francisco. Where could I stay? And I go, well, I got friends back there, but they don't want me staying with them. You know, Bubbles has a studio apartment. I can't stay with Bubbles. And the Durs have a, have a house, but they don't want me hanging out there. Where could I, who could I stay with? I could stay with my business manager, but that's all the way over Marin County. You know, so I, I don't know. I just, and then I started to think, then I started to think about the fact that how many friends do I have? And I have maybe one friend here, and that's Shecky, okay? And that's a hell of a burden for him, okay? Um, but I, you know, and I, it's not like I call everybody friends. I mean, I could call the people like Jeff is a friend who calls the show. We've actually had lunch together, you know? And uh, Rob uh, is a friend. Um, he's, you know, but not in the same way that we talk about friends, you know, that are there when you need them. Like when I was going to, had to go down for my, uh, to see this new doctor about the pending biopsy that I was supposed to have. And I was going to this new doctor. Shecky, without breathing heavy, said to me, um, I'll go down with you if you want me to. And I said, would you? And he said, yeah. And he was there for me. And, you know, that, he's such a good friend such a good friend. Be sure to tell him that next time uh, you talk to him. Uh, because I know one of the members of our audience does talk to him. Uh, but anyway, but outside of that, I don't have any other friends. You know, I had friends when I was working at Sirius because people you work with become your friends, you know. But as soon as you're not working somewhere, they don't want to have anything to do with you because you've got the curse. You lost your job, okay? So none of those people are my friends. I mean, I could call a couple of them up and probably have lunch with them. But, you know, it's nothing lasting or, you know, deep. Uh, most of my friends have died. Steve Gruber, my best friend in the whole world, died. Uh, Bruce David, who became a very good friend of mine, died. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and Shecky just better take good care of himself. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, I was saying to Marjorie tonight, I said, you know, I have so few friends that if I died tomorrow and had to have a funeral, you could have it in a booth at Katz's because there aren't enough people to come. All right? So. Which reminds me of my mother when she died, because she didn't have many people at her funeral either, but she was 100 years old, and anybody who would have come was dead already. Okay. So anyway, that's my tales of woe, ladies and gentlemen. And let me turn on the uh, 
I've turned on the uh, Skype so that people can call if they want to. It's been on for a while and they haven't called. Phil is not calling tonight. Uh, blessed be the gods who make that possible. Uh, and um, it's uh, uh, so it's a free night for everybody to call and put in their two cents worth and so on. Let me grab my uh, now I have my Snapple. This is my frozen Snapple. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, Scott Boddicker's calling. Of course, Scott calls when there is no uh, when there's no Phil. Let me see here. Let me oh, let me. Uh, Josh Wheeler is calling. Okay, let me start giving everybody a space here. Here's Scott Boddicker. There's Scott. Okay, is he there? There we go. Let me uh, let me go put him up there. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Here comes, uh, let me see, let me uh, put in um, uh, Josh Wheeler. He's uh, there. Um, Josh, there we go. Let me put him in that spot. Boom, he pops in. Hello, guys, how are you? Good. Hey, I really liked your Fred Sanford uh, imitation looking for your glasses. That was funny. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. He reminded me of an old classic when he's like, Open up the drawer well, and he pulls out what I tried, pairs what, 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 and what tries I, to find the right What pair. I tried not to do was not to obsess about it. Yeah. You, you, you know, <laughs> because I've had enough trouble obsessing by, about stuff, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm cooling it. Let me see here. Here we go. Here's Jeff Stein, ladies and gentlemen. There he goes. All right. Hey. And now we can go over to our sixth panel and see if more people call. No, I was going to show you my Snapple. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, here comes Dan. Okay, Dan. Let me see. Let me go to him. He would be in the fourth spot in our little... Um, let's see here. Mr. Dan. Okay, there we go. There's that. Okay, all right. There we go. Oh, no, that's not the one I want. This is the one I want. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, so we're 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 almost two more, and we can fill up this panel. Anyway, about the Snapple. Every time I want to talk, so uh, I ha we have it in this this little refrigerator that we have, not the big refrigerator, the little refrigerator, you know. And somehow it's fucked. I mean, we need to get a new one of those because it over freezes. And so if I put one of these Snapples way in the back, sometimes they get completely frozen. I got a slushy. Have you, yeah, but have you ever tried to you put it out and you let it kind of be outside and, you know, and all of a yeah. sudden you got a big iceberg in the center yeah, that's, that's, of your, of your Snapple and you can drink down to the bottom of the drink, but then you've got this big iceberg in there and you... But the best thing to do with the Snapple, if it gets frozen, here's a little hint, folks. If it gets frozen, is to just let all the ice melt. Because if you don't, you've ruined the mixture. Because some of it's frozen, and so you never get the taste back. But I get the taste back now. Let's see. Hmm? Yeah. Because if you drink it, then you... Oh, yeah, it's back again, see. But if you drink a little bit of it, it's some of the part that... Whatever freezes has all the flavor <laughs> or something. I don't know. But anyway. I, I tell you, there's a drink that uh, has recently come out that I've fallen in love with. I, I tried to stop drinking soda at this bubbly, the sparkling water. You ever drink that? That's really good, I think. Bubbly? Bubbly. B-U-B-L-Y. I think Michael Bublé actually does the commercials. Yes, I've seen the Uble. Really? Well, we, it's well, quite sparkling water. It's, that, it's awesome. I love it. That'd be a good reason for me not to buy it. Is I hate Michael Buble. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> they never do. I'm, they, so, so. Hey, listen. I'm really a sucker ready. for fizzy water. They got this fizzy water, uh, this uh, company called Polar, who makes mm. this bubbly water, and they make a version of it that is double fudge diet okay Water? and it's really good because it it's really fizzy you know it's extra fizzy 
Let bubbly, let let bubbly do that. Well, maybe we'll see. I don't know. I think they, I think they have cranberry flavored for the holidays coming out. Oh, good. Everybody has a name. All, uh, all these companies have their pumpkin uh, spice uh, coffee, pumpkin spice this, pumpkin spice that, and they were. That's for Christmas, right? And it's already out. <laughs> it's already oh. out. Halloween, Halloween. Oh, Halloween. You know, you know, did you see the latest one when How, I wait saw... Wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Okay. What is this? This is August, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, isn't Halloween in October? Which is yeah, two months away. Over. It's about a little over two months away. Yeah. At yeah. least wait till September. Well, no, but what you're saying is, what he was saying was... The reason pumpkin spice is is uh, they can do it now is because of Halloween, but Halloween is two, over two months away. Right. And they're rushing everything in our lives. I mean, yeah. Christmas, well, they got to milk every cent out of it they possibly can. They, they start doing the Christmas sales like the beginning of November now. Do you remember how you never oh, saw an that, ad for Christmas till after Thanksgiving? That was the kickoff day. Not anymore. And and the election. Oh, Don't even get me started with the fucking election. I mean, what are we what are we doing with all this madness, right? Oh, who's gonna win the next debate? Who gives a flying fuck? It isn't election day yet. It isn't even close. It's still a year and I mean, maybe January. Yeah. So you know. Oh, the. Uh... I know you said it was pretty warm there, so I was just going to say, uh, we went out west, you know, uh, a few, I don't know, a month or so ago in July, Yeah. and my phone, despite the fact that I have uh, updated it and uh, restarted it like a million times, mm -hmm. the weather, which is like still half of the time still stuck on West Yellowstone, Montana, Mm -hmm. So I get the weather out there a lot, and I, since you said it was so hot there, I was just going to say when I looked at 7 o'clock this morning when I got up, which is 5 o'clock there, uh, it was 37 degrees. So I don't know. Maybe you should uh, <laughs> go see a national park or something. I, I, it's think not I, hot there. I think I might do that. I'm telling you, I'm so <laughs> sick of this goddamn weather. Free air conditioning. You know, the other day I was watching uh, Donald Trump give one of his impromptu oh, uh, press conferences, which he does anytime he's walking. For, if he were walking from the White House to the outhouse, he would stop and talk to yeah, the well, cameras. Huh? He's always next to his helicopter. <laughs> he's, yeah, and I feel, you know, what I feel sorry for the two guys standing guard at the helicopter. It's yeah. like it's like a hundred degrees out there. They're standing at attention, waiting for their leader to hop in the yeah. helicopter, and yeah. he's out there giving a. Yes, the other day he gave a half hour press. Yeah. Con I mean, it isn't called a press conference, but it was a half hour presser. And, and they might and, have to and, pee. And they're sit standing there, you know, at attention. They can't move, you know, the whole thing. And I'm going. That's cruel, you know. I mean, they, you, well, they, well, I mean, they might have to pee. Yeah, you're making us suffer, but boy, you're making or those like guys at least really suffer. like fucking want to scratch their balls or something. Yeah, you know? yeah right. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> it's anyway, fucking hot. Anyway, it was terrible. It was just absolutely ghastly. Um, uh, what they were doing, but and he was sweating like a fucking pig. Did you see that that day? Uh, with yeah. his sweat coming down the side of his face and uh, it, it, all over the place. And I'm looking at him sweat and I'm going, number one, I don't think he knows he's sweating. I don't know what kind of human being doesn't know they're sweating, but he apparently didn't know he was sweating. That was for starters. And secondly, I'm thinking, and he says there's no global warming. <laughs> you know, and he's sitting there looking like a sweating pig, which he looks like. You know, he always looks like he's on a spit somewhere, yeah. you know, right. with, an <laughs> with an apple in his mouth. His spray on tan starting to run off. 
I don't know. Right. That, I don't think that's a spray on tan. I think he's got a tanning bed because the reason his uh, eyes are white is because he wear, has understand. to wear those things to prevent his eyes from. Uh, yeah. That's. So you get those you get those raccoon eyes. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. he's the raccoon president. He's really uh, yeah. terrific. But um, and and I, I'm gl I'm sorry Phil isn't here tonight. Well, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I, but, but oh yeah, he had a lot to say about the Jews. Yeah, this I I you know I mean <laughs> to me, uh, you know first he went first he went after black people, and we could call him a racist. Then we uh, he went after those women. Uh, politician, so we could call him sexist, uh, and now he's gone after the Jews. Uh, he thinks he's the patron saint of Israel. Is what he thinks. Mm -hmm. uh, King. But the fact is, a lot of people are telling him that. What I he think. said the other day. A lot of it, people say it. Huh? A lot of people say it. He is the king yeah. of Israel. A lot yeah. of people say that. Yeah. I've heard him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and um, what did he say today? He said he was something. He was uh, the second coming of this, Christ. I thought no, something close to that. But God, anyway. he said God, not Christ, because he doesn't realize that Christ was the Son of God or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, he he uh, just I mean, oh, he's just amazingly terrible. But anyway, uh, this whole thing with the Jews, you know, that if you're Jewish and you vote Democratic. Uh, you're not intelligent, okay? Disloyal. And you're disloyal. Well, who am I disloyal to? Not a real Jew. The, uh, the fucking state of Israel? I'm sorry. I'm a Jew. I'm not an Israeli, you motherfucker. <laughs> you know, get used to it. Um, I'm very proud to be a Jew, but I don't feel that my fate is attached to Israel. I'm sorry, you know, and I've always hated it when they call Israel the Jewish state because it just gets me in a lot of trouble, you know. When they do something bad because they're a nation and they're capable of doing bad things, uh, I get blamed for it. Oh, how do you like the way your people are treating people over there? And I go, those aren't my people. Those are fucking, have you ever met Israelis? <laughs> Israeli men are some of the most uh, you know what I'm talking about Jeff they're, yes. they're, they're just absolutely uh, obnoxious. Huh? Obnoxious. obnoxious obnoxious Israelis <laughs> are some of the most obnoxious human beings on the planet now oh excuse me I'm being anti-semitic because they're Jewish no they're Israelis Get, you know, and I don't want that confusion I don't like it that when they're attacking another country, what's on the front of their tank? A Jewish star. The sign, the, 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 what do we call it? The logo of my religion. Okay? And the it's on the front of, of a fucking tank or on the back of a tank that's marching in to go kill people. And I'm going, please, you know, change it to something else. You know, I'm sorry, you know, the swastika is already taken. But use some other logo, <laughs> all right? Not, uh, and don't use that and say that this rep, you know, because that's that's my that's my sign, you know. Am I wrong, Jeff? Yes. Okay, tell me how I'm wrong. And you're right. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a very difficult position to be on be, because yeah, a whole bunch of Jewish people. All of a sudden, after World War II, moved to the Middle East and said, "Oh, wait a minute! This used to be our property. I think we're coming back." Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and, and the reality is, oh, it couldn't go anyplace else easily. Well, what happened was, you know, this whole notion of going back to Israel. Uh, didn't even exist until Balfour in England uh, decided that he would go to Israel and, you know, because the, the, the Jews that lived there and the Arabs and the Islamics that lived there got along beautifully. I mean... It, for 6,000 years, if you want to count For 6,000 years they got along. Not only did they get along, but as Jews they considered themselves a certain brand of Jew. 
you know. And they got along very well with, uh, with, the, with the Islamic nation there. Until Balfour came along and started stirring up the pot and talking about a back to Israel movement. Then you had Theodore Herzl, who who came up with uh, with uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, oh, my mind's a fucking blank. You know the 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 the, the, uh, the hmm. What 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 did Theodore Herzl come up with? He came up with. Uh, Oh boy, I'm asking a, one Jew who's got it kind of had a stroke, and uh, and the rest of you guys are goyim. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I wish I could, I wish I could tell you, but well, no, it was. So the, you guys don't it, know the it, answer. It, it, and you it was didn't a, vote for Trump. So it, you're like Jews in name only. It, 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 it was the Gina. politics. It was. The, <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. That's right. Gina. You gotta, Oh, she knows. Theodore. Uh, Theodore. 1948. What? Herzl. What are you looking for? I'm just. Yeah, I, I'm trying to find. Her, Herzl. That's uh, your Israel. Theodore Herzl. Began, right? Yeah, Theodore Herzl. Here we go. Uh, but 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 announces what? what? It's not. That's not it. Oh God. Well, anyway, Theodore Herzl. Uh, who yeah. was an English guy, right? No, that was that was Balfour. Oh, Balfour. Theodore Herzl. Okay, uh, Theodore Herzl and the Jewish state. Okay, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the Jewish state. Uh, he well, you know, he came up with the idea of the, moving back to Israel. Uh, and I'm trying to remember the name of the. What, what's the politics of Israel? It's a political system. Zionism. Zionism. Thank you. Zion. Mm -hmm. The Goyim got right. the score the on Jew, that one. The, the new Jew. Yeah, that's right. Why is it I couldn't remember Zionism? <laughs> yeah. no, I, you give me an honorary Jew because you, you just got promoted. Yeah. Anyway, Her Herzl <laughs> came up with the whole theory. Don't tell my priest. So yeah, you, you know, know when, pe when people say to me Israelis are Jews, yeah, well that's yeah. Uh, Israelis are Jews, but all Jews are not Israelis, and all uh, and and Israelis are Zionists, and every other Jew isn't necessarily a Zionist. I, in fact, I don't like the uh, Zionist. Uh, I don't like the Zionist philosophy. Um, I had a uh, my 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 uh, 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 let's see third wife. Susan, uh, had parents who were members of what was called the Jewish Socialist Bund. And these were the guys in the, uh, in the Warsaw Ghetto that actually caused the uprising, not the Zionists. The Zionists would like to lay claim to it, but they, they never did. And so when I met up with these Jewish Socialist Bundes, I suddenly realized I, I all my life felt uncomfortable with Zionism and with Israel. And when I met up with them, so were they. I felt like I had, had found my people. And these were people, you know, who were preserving the Yiddish language and Yiddish music and culture um, because uh, their theory was Zionism is we have to have a homeland. Yeah, great. You just, you just left Germany where you had all your Jews in one basket so they knew where they could find them. Okay, and then put them in concentration camps. And now you're going to move somewhere else where you're they're going to know, we want to kill Jews? Here's where we go, all right? <laughs> and the, the, the theory that the, that the Jewish Socialist Bundes had was that you don't congregate all in one place. You move over the entire earth and take your culture with you because as long as you take your culture with you, you have what is of value to the Jewish people, and I, uh, I always, I thought that was a great idea. I, you know, they they believed in the diaspora as a way of survival, but you know, if everybody knows where to get the Jews, hey, well, let's go blow up a synagogue, you know. <laughs> um, uh, sometimes we don't all want to get together in the same place. It's not a good idea. It wasn't once before, and I don't think mm -hmm. we where now you think it's a good idea too. You get what I'm saying, Jeff? 
Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, synagogues are uh, are risky places to hang out. Well, uh, you know, somebody brought up the fact that if there's a lot of anti-Semitism going on in this country now, Trump has a lot to do with it. Oh, no it, doubt. You know, it's a strange thing because his daughter yeah. considers her to be Jewish now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she became Jewish because the son, you know, her husband was, and he was Orthodox. Yeah. Are they still married? Oh, yeah. You mean uh, uh, Ivanka and, and uh, Jared? Yeah. Yeah. Jared, he was, didn't he get arrested for diddling little kids? Or, oh, no, that was the other Jared from... Uh, oh, uh, the Subway. 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 Yeah. I'm Jared sure. from Subway. Yeah. Every time I hear the name Jared, I just immediately have... <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, anyway, so, I mean, this whole thing with him coming up with this thing about trying to... It, it were, he, you know what he was trying to do? He was trying to equate... If you're if you're not if you vote Democratic, then you're not loyal to Israel, and that you as a Jew should be identify identify yourself with Israel, and yet he wouldn't allow Islamic women to do that. A few right. weeks ago, you know, he wasn't saying, "Hey, if you don't stand up for Islam, you're being disloyal." Yeah, I think. Huh. So yeah, yeah. So, I mean, here we go with this duplicity that he has. And then uh, it is an anti-Semitic trope to, to uh, try and say, hey, well, if you're Jewish, you must be for Israel. No, it's not necessarily true. I mean, Jeff, you're pro-Israel, but, you know, you're an American, right? Not as pro as Israel is. And I talk to Jews. As I have to be. I talk you know, to Jews. I, I, look, yeah. I look at it somewhat critically yeah uh, okay and yeah. i don't have anything negative to, to say about them yeah yeah uh, uh, the country and you know there's a lot of jews there that's all right yeah but, and and they're not the united states they're another country and right. they have their own attitudes right yeah. and they also happen to have a lot of other semitic people who happen to be non-jewish well, I mean, we, we could easily say that, uh, that uh, Trump is anti-Semitic because being anti-Islam is being anti-Semitic. That's right. I mean, all the people in Absolutely. that area are Semites. Right. You know, so. He gets that. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I don't know. We, we, we're, we I, you know, I was thinking about this. And tell me I'm, I'm off base on this deal. Um. I really think that if I were the world order, as it were, the world system, that I would charge Donald Trump with war crimes, with uh, crimes against humanity. Because what he's doing on, at our southern border is exactly that. Absolutely. Am, am I wrong, Josh? Oh. Uh. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't. No, I don't know that it, it constitutes uh, a war crime. I mean, that's legally speaking. Forget I war crime. That, war ever, crime. Crime against humanity. You know, a crime against humanity. War crime yeah, is a bad you know, term. I, I, for I understand you. what you're saying. I mean, I, yeah. Don't you have to consider? It's certainly that, wrong. No about doubt about children. Yeah. Well, that's there's, what, there's no doubt about what he's doing with children. Yeah. So, I mean, isn't that a crime against humanity? Yeah. I mean, I'd put him on trial in The Hague. Forget about a, a Nobel Prize. Just put him on trial in The Hague. <laughs> but they're not doing it, though. They mm -hmm. could do it. I think if uh, whoever's in charge of I don't know who's all in charge of that world court stuff like that over there you know they could do it but nobody is well i mean he certainly qualifies you know i mean look at what, what's happening to those kids down there that is inhumane it's absolutely oh, inhumane it's it's, it's, uh, uh, it's cruelty for the sake of being cruel and nothing else yeah. that and that's uh well you know what it is i'll tell you what the problem is i i don't think that trump has a political bone in his body okay 
I think he's just trying to play to his base to get reelected. You know, his, his, Trump's politics are not the politics of anything except the politics of Donald Trump and what's good for Donald. Yeah, I mean, I hate to borrow from, uh, you know, uh, somebody that probably a lot of people don't like. I'm just saying, but he is correct in that, uh, you know, Joe Scarborough, you know, had labeled him early on as a, as a he's, he's a day trader, right? Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, it, that's it's the equivalent. I mean, if if you showed him a poll tomorrow that said, you know, eighty nine percent of Republicans were against X, Y, or you know, what I'm saying he's that's and he's on it. You know what I mean? He, he's tweeting about it five minutes later. You know, I mean, that's he's a day trader. And if they change their minds the next day, so would he. You know, yeah, here's a guy. Here's a guy who, after the last a couple of shootings, said, we got to do something about this. I am I want background checks. I want this. I want that. Right. And then started modifying That's his right. stance I'm after talking to the NRA. Yeah. Now, the last person oh, yeah. you're going to call for an opinion on guns is the NRA. Okay? <laughs> That's like calling the I, uh, letting the IRS do your taxes. Okay? Right. You know, it's just it's not going to come out. They're not going to give you the answer that's the right answer. So, I, I, and you know, if he's mm -hmm. if he's really that serious about that, mm -hmm. um, and you know he claims that he is, mm -hmm. people should be you know saying to him, you know, he seems to have a really firm grasp of the Constitution and how it works. Mm -hmm. The President of the United States is allowed to introduce legislation. If that's what he wants, then he should introduce. Legislation asking for it and then fight for it, right? I mean, yeah. if he's that serious about it, then stop talking about it and do something about it, you know? But here. he's not serious about it. Like, you know, you guys are saying, I mean, he's, he, he's not serious about that. I mean, you know, I mean, he's just, that was that was what was the hot, hot stock of the day, and he talked about it the day, and then he moved on the next day. Hold you know, a second, no I'm doubt. Trying, I got two of you. I didn't want you. I want... I, didn't hit the right button. There we go. Two Bree. Of me? You no, know, I'm I, I just oh. on screen there are two of you. There we go. There's Bree. Bree, where are you right now? You're in it look like you're in a a business thing there. Is there a is in you in office? An, you're in an office, yeah. Yeah. Bree is now living in Kuala Lumpur. And look all the stuff oh. arrived from Dubai. Yeah. And most of it in pieces. Yeah. Can you adjust your camera a little bit so we can see more of your body in there? I'm, I'm afraid that that's as good as it's going to get right now. I'm kind of makeshift this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't have all the stuff I need. My, and most of my stuff is broken that yeah. they shipped. So, so, so I'm filling out insurance claims today. Who did you have ship it for you? It was a company called Leader out of uh, Dubai and it's called Ambassador here in Malaysia uh -huh. and uh, they well, broke an antique uh, teak wood uh, bench that uh, is irreplaceable I should have marked it up for more but you know every time you put more you pay more so yeah. you know you have to insure it for what you around what you would accept if yeah. it were gone but yeah. anyway how's your uh, so how, how uh, are you enjoying Kuala Lumpur I wish I could say so, but not really yet. Uh, it's, you know, I've been living out of a suitcase for a while, and it took a while for them to refurbish the house before I could move in, and it turns out the ha they didn't do half of what they needed to do. I've got so many things around the house, lights not working, no, no, who, shower who heads I? not sitting still. So, you know, just a lot of little crap that i got to get done. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, in general, I like the food. Uh, they have some good... You know, drink choices. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. Just make, trying to make it work, but having all these little, yeah. these little things that you get when you move. Do you, you have Seven Eleven there? Uh, they, I think, yeah, absolutely, we do. But uh, more prominent is one called Family Mart. Oh, okay. Well, the reason, no, the reason they I asked, about, the reason I asked about Seven Eleven, is that uh, I was in uh, Nor uh, Norway for the Olympics. And there was a 7-Eleven on the corner, okay? Yeah. Um, not exactly the place you want to get a Slurpee, you know, because it's so cold already, right? <laughs> yeah. But then I was in China, 
And looking out the window from our apartment, there was a 7-Eleven. So I went to the 7-Eleven. I just had to go to the 7-Eleven. Do you know what they don't have in 7-Elevens in China? They don't have Slurpees. <laughs> Why? Because the Chinese people do not like ice. You have to, if you want ice in a drink, you have to ask for it. The word is bing. Okay, you want ice? Bing. Well, that means cold. I, I think that means ice. It doesn't? It means cold? It means cold. Oh, well, then I'm going to have to tell Marjorie because she. we've been living under the misapprehension it meant ice. No, you know, what's funny when, is they don't have a term for that. And same in Germany. Yeah. If you ask for, like, we call them ice cubes. Mm -hmm. They don't have that right. word. They just say ice. Yeah. But we can't say ice cubes. Yeah. Because we had. Uh, yeah. I, what? What do you? Oh, was, uh, I was in Germany when I was a kid, and then we never got ice and drinks. I I remember thinking yeah. that was weird. Yeah. Well, and you didn't uh, have peanut butter either back then. As a matter of fact, before you eat in China, it is customary to have a hot glass of water. Yeah. With tea leaves sometimes. It's, well, yeah, but, but uh, just basically a hot glass of water, and I did it, and it helps the digestion. They think that that ice yeah. is bad for you. And they may be right, because how many they old... They may be right. How many old yeah. Chinese do you see, and how many old Americans do you see? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, you know, they say that it, um, it sort of shocks the system, especially if you eat a lot of greasy stuff, mm -hmm. and then you have cold. They think it hardens up your heart. Really? So rich. Yeah. Well, I'll Maybe. be I'll be a monkey's uncle or something like that. Um, but um, anyway, I mean, I um, uh, what else was happening in the news? Is there anything else happening in the news? I mean, we've ha we have. A I'm so far behind on the news, Alex. I tell you, it's you know, it's a wonder that I have a shirt and pants on. I have to double check, you know, <laughs> with all. It's just been crazy here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you're, you you moved. Look, you moved from Dubai to Kuala Lumpur. It's not like you're moving across town. Yeah. You know, uh, you know we've got to look for a better apartment. Let's go to Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> yeah. What have you got? What, uh, what are you hiding for, Dan? Dan? Huh? What's your hand? Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. That was my. Uh, I I put my. I was looking at something online, trying to look for some news, but I covered up my phone camera by mistake. That was. I'm sorry about that. You're, you're looking to see <laughs> what what the news might be. Uh, by the way. Yeah, the way, I just, you know, I just it, saw it, it, some I, I, stupid Middletown redneck stuff. But you know, I don't like it. talking about Trump because he he loves being talked about. And he so dominates the news cycle that yeah, uh, everybody gives him publicity. Yeah. But anyway, here's the here's the deal. This whole thing with Greenland, <laughs> you know, this guy is losing his fucking mind. And they didn't, you know, it wasn't like they went, oh, well, that's just fake news. No, they copped to it. Yeah, we talked about it. We we were looking into it. And the uh, prime minister of Norway, yeah. uh, is it Norway? Yeah. That, uh, Denmark. Denmark. No. Denmark. Excuse me. Denmark. 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 Who's a female, automatically said, you know, Donald Trump, we are not in the market to sell uh, 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 a green, a Greenland, okay? And that any notion to do so is... Uh, is uh, I don't know if she said insane, but she said something that was kind <laughs> absurd. of absurd. Like, I think absurd was the word. Absurd she used. was the word. We, and we could he, we could annex it. And he then does a a thing, uh, claiming that uh, she was uh, what's the word? Um, nasty. 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 She was nasty. nasty. Fucking bitch. She, she was nasty because she said that your request was absurd. Fucking yeah. hoe. Yeah, fucking ho. Right, exactly. Hey, hey Alice, I just yeah. want to show you this sunset. Man. You know what's this amazing? Sunset. No, what's amazing what is, here yeah. is on uh, uh, right above you in your picture, Ray, yeah. that's a sunset in California. And what you're seeing on the other, uh, on, the, on the top of, above that is Brie 
out the window in Kuala Lumpur. Now, you know, when I was a kid, they had a show uh, called, uh, uh, what was it called? I'm trying to remember. Uh, but it was with Dave Garraway. Wild World in 80 Days. Uh, 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 Wild uh, Kingdom. No, no. But it was, <laughs> it was called um, um, Wide Wide World. That's what it was called. Mm -hmm. And uh, one Sunday they said, we are doing an experiment now. This is the first time ever in the history of television. We're taking a shot of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, and then we're taking a picture of the Empire State Building live in New York. Look at that. And everybody going, ooh, wow, wow, oh, my God, history is made. Get killed. I'm, I'm sitting here, and somebody's got a picture coming from Kuala Lumpur, and the other guy's coming from a sunset in California. You know, I mean, it's, Look at that. you know, and we don't you go, know, I'm looking up uh, ooh, discontinued computer desks on IKEA to figure out how to put my computer desk back together. Oh, I see. Because I lost the little forms. Really? All right. Oh. Well, I just no wanted clue. to show you this because uh, I know you like it, but oh. I got to get moving on my bike and it's too. I got to get a holder so I can go online. I don't want to hold <laughs> it anymore. Thing. It broke my so I'm going to hang up. Oh, I just oh, wanted to show oh, you just, the sunset. No, you can't go anywhere. You just got to show us that fucking sunset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to get dark and I'm going to be out here. About well, I'll tell you, if you dance. hang up right now taking a picture of that, it will freeze and that will be the last picture we have of it. Oh, okay. I'll and it will right. stay on the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at some point, just hang up, you know, right. if you can. Yeah, there we go. And yeah. there it is. It's frozen now, folks. See? Isn't that cool? Isn't that Beautiful. Cool? That's wonderful. Very nice. Anyway, I um, um, this whole notion of buying Greenland, I mean, I don't know where that came up. They, go, they try to say, well, you know, Harry Truman tried to do it. He didn't try to do it. They thought about it. It said it, it, it made an think, offer. They I, turned it down. Yeah, I, and I think I think Scott, there was a situation with Truman where he felt it had a military yeah. uh, advantage well, if they. Yeah. Owned. Yeah. We have bases in Iceland. We still have a base in Greenland. Sure. Yeah, uh, I'll in go Iceland, to you in a we, second, we Dan. A lot. But to to Trump's credit. Okay. Oh God, am I going to do something? He gives him credit. Uh, he po did you see the post he put up? It was a picture of Iceland, and in the middle of it, this big giant Trump Tower. And he said, "I promise, if I buy Greenland, I won't do this." <laughs> got to, got to give him credit for that. Yes, Dan. Oh, of course. Yeah. Now the thing that. Uh that sparked me when I first uh, heard about this is that uh, Greenland is like ground zero for climate change. Yeah. And Trump is, maybe he's thinking, you know, he can cover that up or something. I don't know if he's in control of what goes on in Greenland, yeah. which is ridiculous, but I don't know. There's other resources there and stuff. Josh, let me ask you your opinion. Do you think, and a lot of people have been saying this lately on the shows, as it were, that Trump is losing his mind? <laughs> that he's literally going uh, nuts? Now, I know I'm going nuts because I've had breakdowns in the last couple of days. I know I'm going crazy. But he doesn't know he's going crazy, but a lot of people say he is. I think Questioning his mental capacity is perfectly legitimate at this point because, uh, you know, and I'm not typically into that kind of thing, but it's it's a but it's not unheard of. I mean, we have had presidents in the past who We're crazy. went through short term or fairly fairly long term periods of being less than 100 percent mentally. Functional, you know, so yeah, yeah it's yeah. not, I I love like it would the, be the first time. I love the diplomatic way you said that. She's just very, you really purse your words real well. I mean, he's a person of low intelligence to begin with, so if you subtract just anything from that, I mean, you're pretty well fucked because you're getting down to like a functionally retarded level, you know, to begin with. So, I mean... 
really anything lower. I mean, you know, so anything lower than that, you're really fucked. So yeah, I mean, he's not, you know, he's not all that together. And and in any other time and in any other place, I think that all Americans would probably have seen that. And I don't know what happened the last, I don't know, eight or ten years, but it's just, I mean, it's, I can't figure it out. Hell, it's going to take somebody a lot smarter than me. I mean, I know he joked at a Medal of Honor ceremony like today or whatever that he was going to give himself the Medal of Honor, but his advisors talking him out of it or whatever, and I'm just thinking, you know, if President Obama had made that joke at a Medal of Honor ceremony... Oh. I mean, uh, the crucifixion fucking over with by sundown, you know? It's like, well, he, he, it. he can take the most solemn event and turn it into right. a look-at-me situation. I mean, right. he did that with a lot of, like, in El Paso. He went down there and he started talking about, I don't know, the Democrats or something like that. Oh, you know? You know, a big like, crowd, get a yeah. crowd, get a big crowd. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> look, at, just... look, at, uh, look at Bree. Yeah. Thumbs up, huh? Oh, that's Trump. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if Trump was was in England, they would be throwing him out. Right? Uh, no, but you got the Boris Johnson. English uh, law is. But listen, the British are just about a tad off of being as crazy as we are. Okay? Because, <laughs> okay. you know, Boris Johnson, give me a fucking break. You know. <laughs> Um, was it was it on here that I heard that he purpose Boris Johnson purposely messes up his hair before he goes on camera? Well, I'm sure he does. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of his brand. He he likes being the lovable buffoon. Yeah, uh, the, the difference between he and Donald Trump is like night and day because he tossles his hair to get it that way, and Donald Trump uses hairspray to keep it in place. You know, right? Like Trump can move, and the rest of his hair doesn't. You know, <laughs> I often said, "Why, if he's going bald, doesn't he just, you know, do what I call preemptive baldness?" And that is, like I told this kid, you know, shave it all off. You know, you, you you're better off looking kind of like this, although mine's growing out a little bit now. But you're better looking like this. Because uh, it, it, then being, you know, have everybody go, what's he, why is, why is he got the Danny DeVito look where he has all the hair back here and around, you know. Um, <laughs> you know. Uh, Danny DeVito changed his name. Yes, I know. I know. But anyway, so what I'm saying is, uh, uh, you know, uh, why don't you shave it off? Well, he can't. Because what he did as part of his baldness problem was he had what was called a scalp reduction. And there's a big scar up here, uh, right? Which if he, if he shaved all his hair, he would look, his head would look like a giant penis. <laughs> so, you know, he's not do, doing that anytime too soon. And he's too vain for that. And everything he, he knew he was a dickhead. Everything he does, he does about vanity. I mean, if all of a sudden the the Fab Four or whatever they call those women uh, were to suddenly say, you know, you're really terrific as president, he would change mm -hmm. his whole opinion of them. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, that that's true. Uh, the world yeah. leaders have found yeah. that the way you get to Trump is the minute he's there, you go, great to meet you, boy. You're terrific. We just really like you. That's that's what uh, Kim Jong Un did, you yeah. know. And and his <laughs> ego true. just takes over. This is a guy who's such a megalo that, megalomaniac that that's what's the most dangerous thing about him. He would give away this country for a compliment. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> that's what I hate to bring up another megalomaniac, but Howard Stern said the same thing. He said. I could, Mr. Trump, you call him Mr. Trump, and then Trump just is like um, putty in his hands, he said. But, uh, yeah, well, I, uh, um, y you know, I, uh, anybody calls me Mr. Bennett, and that bothers me. I don't want that. It's Alex, you know. Mm -hmm. um, although, this kid who, I don't know if you heard the letter I read that he wrote, uh, uh, called me. Yeah, that was. 
call me Mr. Bennett, but uh, you know. That's I, a nice letter. Well, it makes you feel good, you know? It makes you mm. feel like you did something. You know, that in this whole big showbiz life that I've had, if I'm uh, a failure at anything, uh, it may be at show business, but it wasn't at, at doing the right thing to help people, you know? I, I think uh, my job as a substitute teacher is officially the lowest paid job where you are commonly addressed as Mr. <laughs> yeah, uh, do you get paid good money? Not really, but it's okay. It, it, I mean, it's like, I mean, between that and DoorDash, it's like, all right. Well, here's the thing I could never get. Uh, the, the the rates at which we pay people, for instance, in your case, you're a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. are, you're, you have these kids that you take care of and that you mold their minds Oh, God, I hate to think of Dan molding anybody's mind. I know. But, you know... It'd be better if, we, if Phil was here to know that I'm molding and, mine. And, and at, at best, uh, what a guy like that, like you, is, is, uh, is a, is a f daytime babysitter. In a lot of instances, yeah. yeah. And that's all they I think. I mean, a lot of the time... Yeah. Yeah. And I'll carry on some of the... And, and yet, you have maybe one of the... Even though you're... A substitute teacher, you in that job have one of the imp most important jobs in the whole society, and you get paid like shit for it. Right. Uh, and yet, some guy who runs a football down a field, and just because he's huge and big and can stomp on everybody in his way, gets paid millions. It, it, there's well, no equity. That's economics. Somebody Economic. should say that's the greatest teacher in the in America. Let's. Sign him to a contract for ten million dollars. Right. You know, no, we don't do that. You know, I mean, what are the important jobs? The important you know, one of the most, uh, somebody. Um, uh, we had this guy at uh, at uh, Sirius XM who used to clean all the bathrooms. And one day when I was in there and he was cleaning the bathroom, I just said, "I want to thank you." He said, "For what?" I said. You clean the bathrooms. Because oh. as I told people later on, they went, well, why did you do that? And I said, because he's got the most important job in the building. Do you think sitting here talking about politics on the radio is the most important job? No. Keeping a place clean where we shit and piss and, and miss the toilet seat and all of that, that's the most important job in the building. And they went, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Well, but it was. And, and he probably got paid less than anybody else in the building, too, for doing that. So I just thought I'd throw that in. That's my, uh, my dad was a uh, business owner, and he was basically a Republican. I mean, not, I don't know, I don't know if he liked Trump. I don't want to get on that tangent, but he, he ran his own business, and he is a small business, like a mom and pop kind of place. But he was always the one. He would always be cleaning the bathrooms, and and uh, like he was the president of the company, about twenty employees, mm -hmm. and he's cleaning the bathrooms. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I had problems with my dad, but that wasn't one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, so um, you know, I got nothing else to talk about. Good night, everybody. Anyway. <laughs> I'm tired. I gotta go sleep. Uh, and I hurt my finger fixing the fix. Look, my fingers are all hacked up from trying to fix the uh, refrigerator. Oh, uh, I got another good piece of news today, though. I went to the uh, went to the dentist once again. I am so sick of going to the fucking dentist. Right? It's been like every week. Back to the dentist for one more thing. And this is I got one more with her. And then I'm through with her until the cleaning in October, but that's just a simple thing. But uh, to, it, what happened was I had to go in for a, um, I, I, I don't know how this happened. Right? There's one tooth, this one right here. So you can't tell, because she did it today. Um, that tooth had a temporary crown on it for something like 10 years. <laughs> like my previous dentist didn't say, "Oh, you know, we got this crown sitting over there." Y you too, right? 
This thing was there for 10 years. I thought it, I thought it was my real tooth. I didn't know. But for some reason, I guess maybe it was there was too much uh, filling that had to be put in there or something, so she covered it with a crown. But rather than say, and then next week I'll fit you for the crown, 10 years later I've got this tooth, it's got this, and then it's got decay around it because they don't, you know, really glue it down with the super glue. And um, so I had to have the crown removed and then the decay taken care of, and then she had to fit me for a new, uh, first, the f first she did a temporary, a new temporary, and then she put the goop in my mouth and made a thing for me to get the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the new crown that will go in there, the really good crown that will go in there, uh, which I'm getting installed next week, next, next Thursday. Uh, but I went in there, and she said to me, my dentist, she said, and it'll cost you uh, $700 out of your pocket because insurance is going to pay $700. You're going to pay $700. And I said, okay, you know, I mean, I, I'm on a fixed income, but I, hey, that, I, 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 I just hope, what is that? Who did that? Is that you? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just uh, goofing around yeah, with something. Yeah, don't do that. Don't, okay, people sorry. do not play. <laughs> Learn the lesson from Jeff. Do not play. <laughs> don't touch anything. Don't touch don't anything. Play on the, don't play on Skype. You want to play with Skype? Skype? You know, I got to... Call your friends and play with Skype. So anyway, so... <laughs> All uh, right. I, um, uh, so she did this whole thing, which I thought was going to be simple, but she's so thorough and so good that, I mean, I, I was in there an hour and ten minutes, and all she had to do was remove a crown... A temporary crown. Oh, there's the guy cleaning. See, see, there's a guy cleaning. Uh, if you're looking at the uh, at the, the picture that uh, Bree is now showing us, there's somebody cleaning. Thank him for me, Bree. Uh, oh, and there's a woman with nice legs. Okay. Anyway, where were we? So let me. Uh, wait a minute. Oh. You're not gonna. Uh, you, you, oh, you know, you, you, Fancy office. Which, which, yeah, it is a fancy office. You see, you think Kuala Lumpur would just be jungle, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and instead, it's this. It's this. Uh, it's this uh, very urban-looking place. And there's the flag of I don't know what country. Anyway. <laughs> um, Malaysia. Anyway, let me. Is that Malaysia's flag? No. Is it? Must be. It's it, is that the Mal Is that the Malaysian flag? Oh. Anyway, where was I? So, uh, so uh, she said 700 bucks, you know. And um, as I'm checking in today, the woman says, you want to pay for your portion uh, 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 now? And I said, sure. And I said, so I'm getting ready. It's going to be 700. She said, let me see how much. 560. Or 540. I went, wow, you know, it's cheaper than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so that was a nice, pleasant thing as well. And I still have, of my insurance, I still have $300 to take care of my cleaning when it comes up. And I don't have to pay any copay on that because they pay for the cleaning. So, so I will have managed to take $2,500 in insurance money and whittle it down to under 300 and not leave much on the table by the end of the year. And then come January 1st, we're right back up again with uh, uh, the same amount, you know, with uh, $2,500. And I don't have any more work to be done, so, you know, I bet I'm going to get the implant done, and that will take care of a good chunk of it. So. Uh, you know. That's, see how, how how horrible my life is, and I obsess about this stuff. What, I, what, I should I, I should count my life as a blessing. Yes, Dan. Uh, I'll bring up something else. Uh, who here has seen on uh, Netflix that show The Great Hack? Have you seen that? The what? It's it's a documentary called The Great Hack, all about Cambridge Analytica. Oh, and yeah. what they did before the 2016 election. It's pretty. It's kind of horrifying because, you know, even though they shut Cambridge Analytica down, there's somebody else doing it right now. 
our pri- we have no privacy anymore. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, no. And you thought we did? <laughs> well, I figured we didn't, but... <laughs> I mean, but it's real interesting. Yeah. And it just goes to show how, you know, how they infiltrate and everything. It's, And what they do is they get all these people that are doing these quizzes, like these little online quizzes mm-hmm. on Facebook that everybody's got probably friends that are doing them. Yeah. Uh, they're just handing their information to these people, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's terrible. Oh, wow. We're screwed. But we knew that anyway, right? It, I, I watch I watched a very interesting documentary. You like documentaries, Scott? Yes. Do you have Hulu? Yes. There is a documentary called The Amazing Jonathan Documentary. Oh, I knew this guy. I knew this guy, the Amazing Jonathan. He was a, a, a comic magician. Okay. No. Uh and, and and pretty good. You know, I mean pretty funny. You know, he he didn't appeal to me, but, you know, I I still realized how good he was. And everybody who I respect says, including my friend Larry Bowles Brown, how good he was. Well, anyway, this guy decides to do a documentary on the amazing Jonathan. And uh, it turns out he's dying. He had some kind of a heart problem, and they told me he only had six months to live, and it's now three years later, and he's still alive. It is amazing. Yeah, so he started. Yeah, he started. He started doing this documentary on him and how he was going to try going back on the road again, even though he was very weak and so on. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the documentary, Jonathan hires another documentary crew to do a second documentary on him. And then as he goes on, uh, trying to compete with this other documentary film, because he said. Oh, these guys are great. They did Man on a Wire, and they did uh, 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 Looking for Sugarman or whatever that film was. They both won Oscars. So I want them doing the documentary on me, too. So this guy is... The, what, the, what the whole thing turns into is a documentary about trying to make a documentary with everybody else trying to make a documentary. But for some reason, so it's a documentary it, about making another documentary. It absolutely grabs you, you know, uh, and you're starting to go. And then all of a sudden, there's a question as to whether Jonathan really has this ailment he says he has, you know, and and on and on and on. And I just, I, I sat there, I just ate this thing up like crazy. It's called uh, the Amazing Jonathan Documentary. And it's more about the making of the documentary than it is about the amazing Jonathan. That sounds interesting. Yeah, it, it's very interesting. It's fascinating. I'll have to check it out. Um, uh, anybody watching any good TV shows lately? I'm getting to sound like I'm running J- uh, a Jack Bishop show now. Uh, anybody? <laughs> anybody? anybody well, the, the Wu Assassin. The Wu Assassin. No. The what? What'd you say, Scott? The Wu Assassin. The Did Wu. You watch that on Netflix? No, I've I've heard about. I saw it uh, there, but I didn't look like it was. Was it good? No. Oh, then thank you for <laughs> warning me. Did you watch the whole thing? Well, well, I'm I'm into it, so I got to finish it. But I'm all, I'm halfway through, and my wife gave up after one show. You know but, something? But it, it, Here is the day that we are all going to become a better culture. <laughs> is when we can start binge-watching a show, and after the first episode, when we realize it sucks, not watch the other seven episodes. <laughs> you know? But somehow... Like a train. Like a, a girlfriend loves binge-watching, and so she'll be watching something. I say, is it any good? And she says, not really. I said, why are you watching it? Get off my back! You know, <laughs> you're always criticizing me. I, I said, no, I'm only asking you why if it's only... It, I mean, even if you say, it's okay, it's not worth watching. I'll tell you a good show I liked, and it takes you a couple episodes before you realize how good it is, is, is this show, The Boys, on Amazon. Yeah. 
I've, I've heard, I've heard, heard of that. I've yeah. heard it's really dark. That's what I'm it's, like. it, it's a very it's very dark uh, superheroes. Yes, they're all yeah. like killing people, and yeah. they're into all kinds of shit. And some yeah. of them are on drugs. And then there's this group of people trying to get the goods on them. Okay. Uh, and yeah. they're the good guys in all of this. And they're not really... They're, those are the boys, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so... I've started uh, watching Alien Life, too. Have you watched, seen that? N- no. Is that, the it's, one, it's, is that the one where they move to another planet or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I started watching it, and I got about 15 minutes into it, and I said, life's too short. Oh. The, the, the first show was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. And I hate that little kid, all right? That's all there is. I hate, the, I hate her daughter, but it, that yeah. she's left on Earth. Kid's well, a pain well, in the ass. Well, it, it's showing you how much free time we've got that we're trying this stuff. I mean... I, I got I, nothing else to do. I did watch all of the boys, and I have to tell you, I enjoyed it. And it's done by the same guy that wrote uh, uh, another show called Preacher, oh, uh, which I yeah. love. I just love because, again, it's dark. You know, it's dark and different. Uh, I yeah. watched the first two and a half seasons of that, The yeah. Preacher, but then they moved it to Monday nights, and I got messed up. Oh, well, it's, it, try and catch it again. It, it's yeah. just so bizarre. I mean, Hitler's in it, and... Uh, you know, yeah, Hitler. Yeah. Hitler's taken over hell. That's now Hitler's great. The Hitler character is awesome. Do you know that that same actor played Hitler once before in a movie uh, oh. as a young man? Hitler is a young man. Yeah, who's trying to be a painter? Yes, uh, uh, Bree's been holding his hand up. Well, yeah. I mean, I watch Netflix, but I don't have a lot of time. I'm I'm doing twenty billion things, but I do watch usually one episode of Lucifer before bedtime. Ah, yes. Uh, speaking of t- Speaking of hell. But what I always get a kick out of, in the beginning it says, at least in season two, I'm like two or three in, it says, based on characters written by Neil Gynum and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, Gaiman. wait, uh, Neil Gynum wrote the G- Bible? G- G- because, Gaiman. You know, Gaiman, you know, Gaiman is his name. Gaiman, Gaiman. yeah. Yeah. He just, takes, he just takes other people's ideas and just, you know, twist, twists them around a little bit. Uh, I don't think, I don't know, uh, he, he, that he should get credit I guess he's, you got to give credit he, to somebody. He but. seems to have an obsession with things religious going amiss, you know. Um, in, in the case of Lucifer, if nobody's watched the show, it's about uh, it, it's about the devil who decides that he doesn't yep. like reigning in hell any longer, moves to L.A. Yeah. And, and becomes... <laughs> and, and it's keep, a cop show. It, it's yeah. a cop show, and he helps this cop solve crimes... Because he feels that it's his job as the devil to get retribution, you know, to make people pay for their is, crime. So being a, helping a cop is the best thing the devil could do. I, I like I Zombie as well, which is kind of the same thing. You know, it's a cop show where yeah. the misfit helps the cop. You know. Yeah, but on Lucifer there was uh, always a, a, a different case every week, but there was also the underlying storyline of things going mm-hmm. on in the in the in the last episode that they did which is only 10 episodes uh, uh, wait are no, you spoiling no i'm not going to spoil it for you but what i'm saying is what they did is they got a little bit away from that uh, case of the week format and got more into the story because they only had 10 episodes you know so they had to they had to kind of get it done uh, what's it moved to netflix yeah what are you what are you taking a picture of now that that's my new couch, which I watch the TV on. Oh, I, I see. Okay, but I don't have time to watch that much. I'm surprised you guys are talking about all these shows, and I'm like, you guys have the time? <laughs> I can fit in one show just before bedtime. Well, I, I don't know. I find uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the best show is to watch, and it is. It's on. Um, it's on PBS here in this country. This show, The Planets is just extraordinary. Oh, okay. Is that on Netflix? No, it's on uh, it's on I think it's on PBS. It, it, PBS. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what's it called? It's called The Planets. It's on Nova. It's on the Nova Planet? in this country. Okay, cuz in the BBC it was just part of their BBC Earth. Our uh, planet. Yeah, it's, it's no Nova's airing it. I'm yeah, pretty no, sure. It's I called our planet. Yeah, awesome. uh, Nova's airing it. Um Wait, our you, as, as you watch it, 
no, that's not our. It's not our planet. That's not. That's Netflix. It's not. Uh, it's not part of the Our Planet series. It's on PBS. No, no. Uh, oh, the planets. There it is. Son yeah. of a bitch. They are running it on Netflix in another country. Maybe not here, because I don't yeah. think it is. Netflix here. on the other countries has all the good stuff. They get Star Trek on there. Discovery, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. they? Really? Yep. Yeah, but anyway, the planets. What's so great about this series is, it really makes you feel absolutely insignificant. Because they keep going things like, so four, four it says four point five billion years ago, and then it says Mars started being, you know, started uh, started forming, and several hundred million years later, it had been completely formed, and you're going. Uh -huh. I am such a piece of shit. I only live to be like, I'm 79 years old now. You know, I can't even think in terms of billions of years. I am just a tiny, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even a grain of sand in the history of the universe. Yes, Dan. Uh, have you heard there was a poem, I don't know, Carl Sagan had this little thing called Pale Blue Dot. Mm -hmm. Where he had, I think he convinced one of the spacecraft um, to, like it was orbiting Jupiter or something, and he told them to focus back on Earth, and, and Earth from there is just a little tiny blue speck. And then Carl Sagan does his voiceover, it's like, imagine all the the leaders who have wasted all this time you know, to take up a small portion that, of that. That's the respect. same <laughs> thing I have felt, you know, yeah. is why yeah. does Donald Trump or anybody or Kim Jong-un or anybody right. want to take over whatever they've yeah. taken over? They are such a World small, minor part of the <laughs> history of this. Forget about the universe, this solar system, you know? Oh, yeah. When you think World that... World leader pretend. And you find out things like, you know, Mercury, which is the closest planet to the sun, used to be around where Mars is, and then got swung, hit by something, and moved it closer to the sun. So, it did. Hmm. Yeah. Would you, How do they know that? Yeah, I don't know. Then they talk, about, they talk about Mars, and they say, Mars was just like Earth uh, four billion years ago, and that it remained that way for about a billion years until some cataclysmic stuff should happen and then the seas dried up and the whatever. It lost it's lost its magnetic, you know, the thing we we have the magnetic, we, field. We, magnetic field. The aurora borealis is the thing that keeps us from not having those problems, right? right. So right. anyway, it ran into problems because its core went bad or something like that. And, and, and all the seas dried up and all the, uh, anything that was growing there. So I went, you know, we're talking a billion years there where this planet was pretty much like uh, Earth 2 or Earth 1, actually, because we were still, you know, volcanoes and trying to settle down. And I'm thinking, in that time, they could have had civilizations. Yep. You know, whole civilizations that existed. You know, it started from just, you know, walking on all fours and then standing upright and then, you know, whatever. And uh, some kind of a big society going. It could have had that happen. And it happened before we were, it, it was ready to go at that point. Maybe we're descended from them. Well, no. we, they, they think that we may have some Martian in us, yes. That, 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 you know, we do forget there are Martian rocks on this planet that, la that somehow slough yeah, off from Mars and then one. wound up here. Yeah, yeah, so, you know. So if you watch this series, it, I call it the watch this series so you will start feeling like a piece of shit program. <laughs> Because you start feeling so insignificant. And, uh, you know, I just, I would love uh, uh, all these world leaders who think they're so fucking important. Or even the Kardashians, you know, to watch this. <laughs> you know, and realize that you're just, you know, you're so insignificant in the grand total of things. You know, and this planet has at least another billion years to go before... Now 
because the sun is constantly expanding, they say on the series, and eventually it will expand enough that it may not fry the earth, but it will fry Mercury, it will fry uh, 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 Venus, and it's not going to fry the earth, but it's going to make it pretty damn uninhabitable. But what they were saying was, you go all the way out to Saturn, and there's a, pl there's a moon there called Titan, which is, they say, earth size. Okay, it's huge. All right? And it's, but it's frozen. It's just ice. All right? If we were to go there, when the Earth starts getting too hot from all that, what's going to happen to, to Titan is it's going to start melting, and it's going to have oceans, and it's going to have water, and it's going to have a lot of things we need. And so that might be the eventual place that people from Earth can go. But, of course, that's a billion years from now, folks. So, you know, don't start getting no. too uppity. You know, Don't you're, buy any tickets just well, yet. You're, you're going to be mulch by that time. You won't even be mulch anymore. You know. Well, here, if, if we're going to get philosophical, uh, you know, life as we know it is pretty, you know, the universe is really friggin' huge. Billions and billions of light years in any which way direction. <laughs> Yeah, there, you figure there's got to be some other intelligent life out there somewhere. We just haven't found it yet. But even so, we are the only uh, living beings, or only at least intelligent enough to know what we are. You know, the closest star to us is about four light years away. Even that is like takes light four years to get there. That's pretty freaking far. Do you far. know what? Do you know what star that is? Alpha Centauri. Very good. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and I'm a, I'm a nerd. I love space. And I'm it's a space twin star beta, beta Beta Centauri. There are two of them actually. Yeah. That's the closest neighbor we have. Um. And I think they got a planet around there too. Well, no, they I'm, might I'm, look, be happy. Look, uh, you know, this, it, what, what we call what we call Earth. Okay, it, it, there's a name for it. We are a Goldilocks planet. I know that's a strange term, but that's the term they use for a planet, which they feel that has the uh, the uh, ability to sustain life like ours. Now, that's not to say there isn't life on Mars, that if we go deep into Mars and we find water, we can find little amoeba or whatever, but life like we are, okay? Yeah. And that... Uh, it could well be there are a lot of, you know, the, the chances of be, there being a lot of Goldilocks planets that are a certain distance from the sun or capable of sustaining life uh, all uh, all exist. They, people may not look like us or whatever, but, you know. I took well, an astrobiology funny. class online. Yeah. Uh, what were we going to say, Dan? Oh, I was just going to say they're finding new exoplanets all the time and many of them aren't in uh the habitable zone because the ones they can find right now i think are the bigger ones i think are like big like jupiter sized planets yeah, yeah. but they're getting better at finding the smaller ones all the time yeah, so yeah. But, and uh i i read extensively about extraterrestrial life i can tell you a million things from the drake equation to the fermi paradox to you know on and on um, I have uh, the most recent book is now there are 75 reasons to or 75 answers to the Fermi paradox. And uh, and so I keep up to date. The book gets updated every couple of years with new uh, new uh, potential answers. The one one that I like the best is that we are a zoo planet. In other words, like all the other places and we were uh, seeded kind of like um, Ridley Scott's movie. Uh, Prometheus, the idea that there are engineers who plot out certain planets and, you know, and get them going. But that's kind of a fun one, that we're, we're an off-limits zoo, kind of like a protected park, uh, you know, in the, in the universe. But one of the other ones is, and Seth Shostak at the SETI Institute says this one a lot, because he, he gives these talks all the time where he mentions it, but he thinks that we might just be in a corner of the universe where we're just separated from a lot, a lot more of the people, kind of like New Zealand is, you know, or uh, Pacific Island might be to others, you know. So 
we're just so far away that it doesn't make sense for people to go there unless they had a specific reason or they happen to be passing well, through. Well, how about, how about um, my, I, I had a theory once, and it's just a theory, you know, that maybe we are the only planet with this kind of life on it in the entire universe and that we're meant to be the seed planet. Maybe. You know, there's that, that thought, Fair too. Mistake. What do you think, Josh? Yeah. Or is this anything in your bailiwick? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't have any of these answers. I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, I mean, uh, I like uh, you know, like astronomy and everything. But I mean, that as far as life out there or whatever, I, I don't know really. I'll tell you one thing about the planets that I really like. The show is. That when they put up there that, uh, you know, Mars, 4.5 billion years ago, that's really going to piss the Christians off. (laughs) (laughs) Because to them, them, Earth is only 5,000 years old. Right. The the born again, the evangelical. Yeah. I got enough of those around here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know. And don't start getting into Adam and Eve. They, of course, existed. And there, of course, was the Garden of Eden. And there was Wait, the I heard, I heard it wasn't Adam and Eve. I thought it was Adam and Steve. Well, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to ruin Lucifer for you in the next season, but the major plot yeah, line. Wave your hand when you're done. No, I'm not done yet, but this isn't going to ruin it for you. No, this is only going to make you... No, this is... This is only going to make you want to watch it, okay? It's not going to no, spoil it. No, no, no. The fact is that he meets up with his first love. And who's his first love? Eve. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here it comes. Uh, yeah. Let's hey, see here. There I just we was go. listening to what you are talking about. Yeah. And, uh, oh, here's my favorite. Um so there could be a whole other reality in a fourth dimension. For instance, like it's. an ant, right? It lives in two dimensions, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And once you take one an item out of their second dimension and, say, put it on a shelf above them, it's as if it disappears. So there could be another dimension that life on Earth is not able to experience well, because it, we don't have it, the right it, sensory it, it, equipment. It goes, and there could yeah. be all other stuff like all around us and we don't even see it. Well, this you're almost close to something. Uh, there's a thing called string theory and a few other uh, theories in, yeah. which, in which there are upwards to, I think, 12 other dimensions. Yeah. That there's a you in every one of those dimensions. Now, it's not doing what you're doing right now. The you you in another dimension may not be stupid enough to call a fucking talk show, okay? Right. Uh, But that that we all exist in all those... Or move to Malaysia. In all those dimensions, you know. But because there's a barrier between each dimension, we don't start bumping into each other. Yeah. Well, that's like the multiverse, right? The multiverse, yeah. 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 Well, this is this. Yeah, that's the string theory, and there's the multiverse. Yeah. Which is a, yeah. Oh, that basically is that basically the same thing that says like every decision that you make, you're creating another alternate yeah. universe, yeah. and you made so, other decisions that led to other alternate universes yeah. and to infinity. Schrodinger's cat. I think they call it. Well, no, no, Schroeder's, no. <laughs> no that's the, oh, it's different? No, yeah, I, that's the one where that's like the quantum thing. What, what oh, is right. it? You have, a cat, you, wait, wait, you have a cat in a box, and the cat is, there's something in the box that can kill the cat, and the cat is either alive or dead. But I don't know where the theory goes from there. <laughs> right. Well, there's some, yeah. There's well, somewhere. they figured it out, right? There's a solution to that now. Uh, is there? Yeah, I read that they somebody figured it out. But the reason they think that there's an, at least one more dimension is because when you get down to quantum physics, the, it looks like objects are able to move through barriers without ever, okay. with no time passing. Schroeder, Schrodinger's cat is... A famous hypothetical experiment designed to point out a flaw in Copenhagen's interpretation of superposition. Wow. As it applies to quantum theory. 
A living cat is placed into a steel chamber along with a hammer, a vial of hydrocyanic acid, and a very small amount of radioactive substance. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I gotta, that's just a short version of it. Okay. Um, uh, uh, radioactive substance decays during the test period. A relay <laughs> mechanism will trip the hammer, which will in turn break a vial of poisonous gas and call the cat, cause the cat to die. So, um, he created the, nice. he, well, he created this mental experiment in 1935 yeah. to point out the paradox I between what quantum in. theorists held What's to be up? true about the nature and behavior of matter on a microscopic level and what the average person observes to be true on the mic macroscopic level with the unaided human eye. Anybody get that? No. <laughs> I thought there was this thing where... Uh, well, I got I to gotta smoke some more weed, maybe I'll... Comprehend. It was time to, to show that. what the Copenhagen interpretation would look like. Ba, 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 does not know. Oh, I see. The observer cannot know whether or not the atom of the substance has decayed and consequently does not know whether the vial has broken and the cat has been killed. Okay? So all these things are present in the box, but you don't know if those things activated themselves in order to kill the cat. So basically... When the cat is in that box, he's either dead or he's alive. How long has the cat been in the box? That's what I want to know. Well, if it's I, been more than two weeks with no food, he's dead. I don't know, but if he's got some uh -huh. like kitty litter, I think he's okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, under well, the interpretation, the, here, we box, go, here we go. So the cat's going to want to go in there anyway. <laughs> under, under the interpretation, this is the most intelligent, by the way, this show has gotten. Totally. With, with, in history, without fit. This is like a Schrodinger's cat thing. It only happens yeah. once in a millennium. This will never happen again it was, either. It, 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 <laughs> Schrodinger thought experiment was designed to show the Copenhagen interpretation would look like if the manufacturing. Well, where is it? Wait a minute. Oh. Uh, oh, okay. According to quantum law, under the Copenhagen interpretation, the cat would be both dead and alive until That's someone it. looks into the box. In quantum mechanics lingo, the cat's ability to be both alive and dead until it is observed is referred to as quantum, uh, I can't even pronounce this word, indeterminacy, okay, or the observer's paradox. The logic behind the observer's paradox is the proven ability of observation to influence outcomes. Did we all get that? But it's going to be what a, do you think it, it, Phil but, would say about uh, it? Well, there's going to be a test on this tomorrow. So, you know. Phil <laughs> would just say it's all just liberal bias. The liberal media. It's fake news. It's fake news. Fake news. No, here. Um, oh, I, I almost forgot what I was going to say. But did you know? Here's another trippy thing. We might be, and actually, it would be just me because it's all, everything's all simulation. Mm -hmm. Did we? By the way, did we lose? Uh, War, yeah. Did we lose? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Bree. Hey. Oh, Bree. Oh, oh, Bree. We just have his. Uh, we have. Oh, I see. He's got his. Uh, are you there, Bree? He's muted. You, uh, I think with Schrodinger's cat, and it's until you see the cat either alive or dead, the cat is both alive or dead, and it's provable by some equation. Okay. It doesn't right. make yeah. sense okay. to our mind, yeah. but they can prove that the cat is both alive and dead. I think that's what it is. Bree, are you there? I know he's he's still there. He's just got his picture up. Oh, there we go. He, he's back. Okay, he's back again. Um, we, but anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, do you know? Uh, do you understand this whole Schrodinger's cat thing, Bree? By any chance, if you're if you're listening, uh, oh, he's talking to somebody else. Do you, do you understand the Schrodinger, Schrodinger's cat theory? You do. <laughs> well, wow, good. Hmm? My colleague does. Really what do you want to hear? What? I, we, is it really a theory? Schrodinger was trying to dismiss the idea in quantum mechanics that something could be two states at once. And he said, well, if I do this, you can't, he was kind of really saying, you can't say the dead, the cat is either dead or not dead. It either is dead or it isn't. You can't say it's both states at once. 
So he was saying that in quantum mechanics, it would be until we open up the box, we don't know. So we we'll do right. both at the same time. Exactly. And he was trying to say that that was absurd, and that's but, why he came up with that analogy. So actually, Schrodinger didn't believe in quantum mechanics when he said that. Oh, but okay. We tend to interpret it as a way of explaining quantum mechanics as if he actually believed in it. There you go. But the, haven't they been able to prove it though? They have on a molec on a submolecular level, they can see an object that's in two places at once. Haven't they been able right. to do that? Yes, no, yeah. and, and things can be particles and waves at the same time. Yeah. So that's what Schro so when Schrodinger didn't believe in this, even though science has proved that's true. So yeah. he used that example of the cat in the box with the acid to say this sounds absurd, but we all know that actually what he was saying was absurd is actually true. Yeah. That something can be a wave in a particle, how we observe things can change something, something can appear to be in two places at the same time because because of these things in subatomic in some atom, subatomic space. Yeah. Well, like we've certainly is, gotten is heady with wave. this program, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> hey Alex, do you know the name Dick Summers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who was it? He was a radio announcer at one point and then wrote terrible poetry. <laughs> yes, what? it was awful poetry. I saw it when I was a kid. What yeah. station did he work for? He, uh, where, where did I work with him? I think I worked with him at WMCA. Yeah. MCA, was MCA, yeah. yes. Before that, he was at WBZ. Yeah, well, why do you ask about Dick Summer? I grew up with his kids. Oh, okay. I thought maybe he died or something. <laughs> or maybe he did. I don't know if he died, but I grew up with his, I grew up with his kids. Uh, really? Yeah, oh. we... Anyway, we were talking about that, so... Yeah, I work with Dick Summer. Who's talking right now? I thought... It, it, it's, he's off screen. <laughs> he's off oh. screen. Well, who is that? <laughs> quickly. I thought it was Schrodinger's cat right. or something. Hey, hey, just yeah. quickly. Who, who, uh, who, get, yeah, who is that? That's what, this is an experiment of Schrodinger's cat. Is someone else here? <laughs> Yeah, he, he, but who is? But who is he? Who is he? Just give him credit. Bree. Does he exist? That's my colleague, Ken. Ken. Uh, Thank you, Ken. Yeah. We appreciate it. Hey, listen, the, the, the theme's playing. That means I got to get rid of these people. And uh, all right. Uh, Thanks, Alex. See you next time. Take them out like a like a kid who's mad at his school. Anyway, uh, got to say good night. Goodbye to Scott Boddicker. Bye to Dan. Bye to uh, Josh. Uh, bye there uh, uh, to uh, Bree, uh, to uh, Jeff, and to Ray. Oh, boy. There they go. That's a whole passel of people. Give yourself a big wave goodbye to everybody, and I'll wave back, okay? There we go. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. Boy, we that was, that was good. I like getting that intelligent. That's fun. Anyway. Hey, you know what we got coming up next? We got uh, the um, uh, intersection uh, starring Jack Bishop. Uh, he'll be here with his citizen panel, so make sure you call him so he doesn't feel alone. Uh, and he will be using the same Skype number, too. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, Damien's not on this week. That seems to be a common occurrence. Damien, Damien's not on this week, so I'll be on once again tomorrow night uh, at... Uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.